Here in Final Cut Pro today, we're going to be creating this flashing type animation that you can see up on screen now. We're going to be looking at installing a plugin. We're going to be looking at how we create the type and then how we animate it in Final Cut Pro 10. Now the basic title tool and lots of the other title tools that are installed by default in Final Cut Pro cannot be keyframed. So we're going to be installing one of Alex 4D's plugins, which is going to allow us to keyframe the color of our basic title. So we're going to go ahead, first of all, to Alex 4D's website, and we're going to download the plugin and install it. So I've shared a link this page below so you can go ahead and download the plugin and we'll run through that right now so Alex runs through how to use his plugin how to install it here as well and there's a couple of different ways of doing that we're going to run through everything in this tutorial so we'll scroll down and what we're looking for is this disk image that we're going to download so I'm going to click on the download disk image and basically in this disk image is a folder that we'll need which is where the the plugin that we're going to install is so I'll just drag this to the desktop so if I double click on here it will unpackage the contents. And what we're looking for here is this basic keyframeable title. So I'm gonna pull this to one side and then I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new finder window. And in here, I'm gonna to come to the home folder, my home folder. If you don't see your home folder in the links on the left here, or you've removed it or removed it, then just go to the go menu at the top and go to home or shift command, shift command and H. Okay, and now we're gonna to go to movies motion templates, titles, and I'm gonna create a new folder in here. I'm gonna to go to file, new folder, and we'll call this folder Alex 4D. And to install the plugin, I just need to drag this across into the new folder in that location, and I'm ready to go. So if I drag this out here, you can see the location that I've installed it in. So my home folder, movies, motion templates, titles, and then Alex 4D, okay? That just keeps things organized in the folder. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm gonna create a brand new library for this project and we'll call it flashing type. Hit save, we save that to the desktop. And now once we're in here, we're really aiming to set up a project that we're gonna then upload to Instagram. So, so I'm gonna to go to the new project button down here and we can work with a 720p HD project here, that will be fine, um, or you can set up um, a 1080p project if you want to create something at a higher resolution. But I'm going to stick to 720p for this example because I'm just going to be uploading this to Instagram. So I'm going to type in the name for this. Awesome flashing type. And I'm going to click OK. So once we've got the timeline set up, what I essentially want to do is create a short loop that I can then repeat. So it's going to be flashing from one color to the next. So if I go to my titles here, you can see that because I've installed the plugin, it's listed and I can drag this new title onto my timeline and I'm gonna zoom in a little. Now, I wanna cut this title off at two seconds. So I'm gonna click here once and just type in two dot. So when you click in the, the time code in the middle here and then type in two and period or full stop, then it will take you to two seconds. You have to hit enter for it to work, but it will take you two seconds. So you can see I'm at two seconds here, and I can now just drag in the end of that down to two seconds. There's a minimum video length that you can upload to Instagram, which I think is four seconds. So we're gonna make something that's five or six seconds long, roughly, um, so that we can upload it to Instagram, but it will be able to continually loop once it's up there. So I'm gonna click on the basic keyframeable title that I placed on the timeline there. And then I'm gonna come up to my type options. You can see I've got the title options, the text options. What we're really looking for in here that's different to the basic title, the one that's installed with Final Cut, is this keyframeable setup that we have on the right-hand side. So you can see there's lots of different features that you can keyframe here. We're gonna be working purely with the, the color option down here. So you get an idea of how this works, but you can go ahead and play around with this a little bit later on as well. But we're gonna keep it nice and focused, nice and simple for the moment. So I'm gonna to go to my text options and we're gonna type in. Okay. So once that's set up, I'm gonna increase this so that it fills as much of the screen as possible. And then just come back to my title options here, select this so that I can then reposition my type. So I'm just gonna drag this up. So by selecting the title on the timeline, we can move this around now and we can center it when those two yellow crosshairs pull into position. So once we've got that there, and we're gonna come back to the title options here. So we're not gonna be editing the fill 
in this area, we're going to be going and editing the fill in the title options that this plugin has set up. So I'm going to click on my color box here. I'm going to go first of all for a nice yellow and I'm going to zoom in a little more on the timeline. And then I'm going to turn my keyframing on here and then I'm going to come ahead in time to nine frames, add another keyframe. So basically I want to hold between these two keyframes, which is why I'm adding a keyframe at nine seconds before I then change the color to purple at 10 seconds. Okay. So we can see now we've got this flash between just before nine frames and just after 10 frames. And then we'll go ahead to 19, add a new keyframe, go ahead one frame, change this to yellow, and you can see we're again flashing. So we start off with yellow. So we flash to purple and then back to yellow. So basically, so essentially here now, we wanna to flash to purple one more time. So we're gonna come ahead to 29 here. We're gonna go back to purple and then we'll cut this off around 109 frames and then we'll be jumping back to yellow at the beginning. So I'm gonna now add a new keyframe, jump ahead to one second, make this purple. So we've got another flash here and then we'll go ahead to 109 and I'm gonna pull my timeline back in here. That 109. We're quite zoomed in, so it's jumping around a little bit here. And then now when I'm playing this through, okay, you can see it's looping nicely. So, so now all I need to do is highlight my clip on the timeline, copy it, come ahead to the end of my sequence, and then paste it. And I can paste that in a few times and then hit Shift and Z. So I now have just over four seconds of loop. Okay, so let's just play this through just to check that we've got everything right. Okay, and you can see it's gonna continually loop nice and in time. And now we're gonna go ahead and export this and then we'll look at how we get it uploaded to Instagram by transferring the MPEG-4 we're exporting through to Google Drive. We're gonna download that on a smartphone and then upload it to Instagram from the smartphone. So we've got everything set up here. We're gonna to go to the share button across here on the right. We're gonna be sharing a master file and the settings that you need to set up here so that you get an MPEG-4 are the format should be computer. The format here should be either H.264 faster in code or H.264 better quality. It doesn't matter too much. This is a really short file, so it's not going to affect the export time at all, really. The resolution here is the, the same. We're matching what we have. And Instagram will accept that kind of higher resolution file, and then you can crop it if you want to in Instagram. Or we could have set up a 640 by 640 pixel project here so that we knew exactly what it would look like when we uploaded it. And that's sometimes a good thing to do when you're wanting to keep video sharp, you wanna see it the size it's gonna be. So once this is done, we're gonna do nothing. So we'll hit next here. We'll call this awesome flashing type export. And the next stop after we hit save here is to Google Drive, where we're gonna upload this file to. Okay, so let's just hide Final Cut Pro here. And we're gonna jump into Google Drive here. Now I have a folder for all my Instagram uploads set up. And if you haven't used Google Drive before, then it's really easy and straightforward to use. You can access it through your web browser on your computer and then access it through the app on your smartphone. And we'll see how that works at the other end. So essentially we've gone to drive.google.com. We've logged in with my Gmail. And now we're gonna go ahead and drag the file that we're uploading into this folder. So you can see here, my video has exported and we can drag that across to here and wait for it to upload. And now that it's uploaded, we're gonna go ahead and look at uploading this on a smartphone. So there are two applications we're gonna use here on the smartphone. One is the Google Drive application and one is the Instagram application which we're using to upload. So we're gonna swipe to the Google Drive application first of all. And we're gonna jump straight into my 
Instagram folder, which I'll just refresh here. And you can see the video that I just uploaded on the web browser version of Google Drive has appeared here perfectly. So I'm gonna click and hold on this, hit the download button down at the bottom here. And now that's downloading to my downloads folder, which is then accessible within Instagram. So that should be pretty quick to download. So I can jump into Instagram now, jump into the images, and we can see my video has uploaded. So first of all, when it's uploaded, when it's a widescreen video like this, Instagram will crop it. So I'm just gonna hit the crop button on the bottom left there, which will allow me to see the entire video. And now I'm gonna hit next. And here I can add any color effects that I want to. So I can change up the, the video a little bit. I can obviously change which photo is the cover photo, whether I want the, the purple or the yellow. I'm gonna leave it as the yellow. And once I'm happy with all that, oh, and I can trim my videos here as well and turn off on or off any sound if there is any sound, which there isn't on this video. So I'm gonna hit next. And now I can write in a caption. And once I'm happy that I've tagged everything up and I'm ready to share, I can hit the share button and everything's done. So we've taken a video from Final Cut Pro 10 into Google Drive and then uploaded it to Instagram. Great, so if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro, then please don't hesitate to send me a message on YouTube, or on Instagram, or via Twitter. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.